Welcome to this video on paleo botany. Paleo botany is nothing but study of plant fossils. Paleo refers to ancient botany, of course, a study of plants. There are three main applications of paleo botany. The first application is that we will understand the process of evolution. What is evolution? Evolution is gradual transformation of one organism into the other. And this process has taken millions and millions of years through which unicellular organisms have evolved into multicellular organisms. For example, we have now the angiosperms which are dominating the earth have evolved from unicellular organisms. This process has taken more than 3.5 billion years and this is understood clearly with full evidence only through the fossils. Now we have the fossils related to all the stages through which the angiosperms have evolved from the unicellular organisms in the form of fossils. That is the first application. The second application of paleobotany is we will understand the paleoecology, paleo environment. How the environment existed in the past we can understand through paleobotany. Third and the most important application of paleobotany is that we will be able to discover the fossil fuels. Location of fossil fuels can be achieved by, can be known by paleobotany. We, we all know that there are two main fossil fuels. One is the petroleum oil, the second one is coal. Both these have formed by plants and animals. They are hidden under the ground. So they are hidden in the crust. For example, we have coal is found only on the land and petroleum is found under the water. So these have formed from plants and animals. The exact location where these fossil fuels are found in the crust is known only through fossils which are called index fossils. So these are the three important applications of paleobotany. Then now let us understand what are fossils. Fossils are remains of plants and animals that are hidden in the earth's crust in rocks all right and those plants are not living anymore they have become extinct are called fossils two important criteria number one they are the remains of plants and animals that are hidden in the rocks of the earth number two those plants and animals are with the fossils that are discovered are not living now. They have become extinct now. And there is one more important uh, characteristic feature of fossil is the fossil should be at least 1 million year old. So that is what is a fossil. Actually fossil is derived from a word called fodir. Fodir means to dig up. In the past anything that you get when you dig up was called a fossil. But now the, uh, the meaning of the word fossil has changed. It is now confined only to the plant and animal remains that you discover when you dig up is a fossil. Now plant fossils are of different types. I will show you in the uh, course of uh, this uh, talk and this video later. But the important types of fossils are impressions. Impressions are nothing but the uh, external features of plants and animals that are found on the rocks. Only the external features are found and there is no organic matter there. The external features are imprinted on the rocks. That is impression. The second type of fossil is called petrification where the plant or animal is completely converted into rock by infiltration of rock particles where you get the plant in the form of a rock. But if you take a section, you can see all the internal details same as that of a plant inside a petrification. 
the third and most important type of fossil is called compression where large masses of plants and animals are compressed under high pressure and temperature under the earth's crust and there are three examples for compression peat lignite and coal peat is of recent about 1 million year old lignite which is 100 to 150 million year old and coal which is about 200 to 250 million year old so all these are plant fossils that are compressed and hidden under the ground now the next important type of a fossil is actually called amber also called mummification where the entire plant part or animal is preserved in gum and resin for example we had uh, in the past coniferous plants during carboniferous period during jurassic period the earth was completely covered by only coniferous forests and these plants produce gums and resins and these gums and resins are very very sterile they don't allow any growth of any microorganism no decomposition occurs plants and animals which are preserved in them are preserved forever and they are discovered later after millions of years and this is called mummification or amber so this is these are the important type of fossils now the third important thing that i want to tell you is fossilization what is fossilization it is nothing but the formation of fossils how fossilization occurs this fossilization process occurs in the following steps number one it is called withering withering means the rock particles are broken into smaller and smaller bits of different sizes second one is transportation so rock particles which will become almost soil are, are transported by means of wind water gravity from higher regions to lower regions usually to low laying areas called basins the rock particles are carried and settled and sedimented in the basins now during the sedimentation even the plant and animals also are sedimented they are also concealed in the layers of the rocks so this sedimentation process is very very crucial here plant and animal uh, parts are actually buried under the layers of rock particles this is called sedimentation third important step in uh, fossilization, fossilization is called cementation so these rock particles cement together join together to form rocks and the last step is called lithification they get converted into rock so formation of rocks and formation of fossils go hand in hand they happen together it's a simultaneous process and they are concealed there there are some important criteria that are uh, that needs to be understood here during fossilization that is the process of fossilization occurs very very slowly it is not a very fast process a very slow process and the environment in which the fossilization should occur should not allow any decomposition the plant should not be decomposed if it is decomposed it is not forming any fossil that is very very important all right so that is what is very important uh, criteria for fossilization all right once the plant of preserved as fossils in the rock later scientists will discover these rocks and then they will discover the fossils and for that we should understand little bit about rocks there are three types of rocks igneous rocks which are directly formed from lava they are called primary rocks second type of rock called sedimentary rocks sedimentary rocks are also formed same way as the fossils are formed which are also called the fossiliferous rocks only in the sedimentary rock fossils are found the third type of rock is called metamorphic rock metamorphic rock is formed from the igneous rock and sedimentary rock because of high pressure and temperature under the ground so the metamorphic rock is called the tertiary rock so this is brief introduction about paleobotany before we actually go into the next stage